Welcome back. We are still here at the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce Trade Mission. Um, we've been talking to some of the people who attended the trade mission today, and some of them are here for various reasons. Some are from consultant companies, some are manufacturing companies. And the people here with me today is Freedom L. From what company? I'm here from the Navy Group and we are here because we have a export import international export import trade show coming to the Baltimore area in June of this year, the 12th to the 15th. And and this is Ayotunde and he is the organizer of it. Thank you very much, Freedom. Uh, my name is Ayotunde Adebayo. I'm the uh, President and CEO of Navi Incorporated in Baltimore. Uh, we are main major focus on uh, promoting international trade between the United States and uh, Africa. And uh, because of the fact that we understand the bottleneck that a lot of Africans are facing in exporting their product into the United States marketplace, we decided to, to organize a trade show titled U.S. Exporting Product Opportunities for African Consumer Products. The event is actually focused on the United States and Africa because there is a trade relationship between the two continents. So we want to take this advantage by promoting a lot of African exports into the United States marketplace. More so that Agoa has a policy that is actually you know, promoting most of these African countries to be able to have a, a, um, a, a share in the American marketplace. Okay, tell me, you, you are a consulting company. I do like uh, Tell me a little bit, tell the viewers a little bit what your company do in general, apart from what you said. Well, um, the main thing that we do is we try to build the relationships between different places, providers and um, producers and consumers. So um, what we are, are intending to do with this import-export trade show is to really increase the relationships between African uh, producers and consumers from all over the globe. Now we're having it based here in the United States because the United States is such a big market in terms of trade, but we want to extend it to the Brazilian uh, marketplace, the Venezuelan marketplace, the, you know, the Cuban marketplace, wherever we can, um, because we want to raise African products up in, in the hands of African people up to the top of the marketplace. So that's, that's really our main reason for doing this. You are, though you are going to Africa, but you are also in other countries, correct? That's good. Now, what are some of the challenges that you see in bringing um, consumable goods from Africa to here? Um, most of the exporters that are actually into these exports, some of them don't even understand the U.S. Uh, custom and. Uh, their policies, they don't even have the, um, the actual standard of the American product standard or the standard that the American companies, the American government want the product entering into their country to be of. So in that regard, they are having a lot of problems exporting their products directly to the United States. And that's one of the reasons why we are starting to come up with this event. Okay. Additionally, in terms of promotion, you know, the American market is deeply promoted all over the world. Everybody knows about American products and the value of the American product. It, it, it has a name that precedes itself, if you understand what I mean. But in terms of African product, it's not as well known. It's not as well advertised. It's not as well, um, you know, promoted and yet understood. we have a lot of consumers here. And we, yet we have a lot of consumers. And that tends to be the problem because 
closes the door, and that's the bottleneck that Ayatunde was talking about, closes the door on Africans for African consumable products. So it makes it so that um, African products are being sold secondhand and thirdhand through other countries, and we don't get to do it ourselves. So we want to bring all of the African producers to the forefront, and we want them to represent themselves and to tell us about the quality of their products because they are greatly, you know, qualified. Is there anything your company is doing, I know you do consult, is doing in Africa, particularly to prepare them in terms of packaging their, their consumable goods and also making them to meet the U.S. standards? Standard, yes, um, we are networking very strongly with the Nigerian Export Commission Council and uh, Nigerian Export Commission Council is one of the sponsors of this event that we're talking about. Nigerian Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment, they have endorsed this event. Uh, the Ghana Embassy, they've endorsed this event. Nigerian Embassy here, right here that we are, they've endorsed this event. And they said, well, this is not really help African products to be able to compete with other products or any other companies in the most place. Now, are you targeting just big importers um, to prepare for this, you know, bringing in the food. Mm -hmm. What about the the little, the actually the producers, the local producers? Are you guys targeting anything towards them in terms of education, in terms of how to grow their food or how to package their food to get it to the main wholesalers? That right. And like I said again, through the network of Nigerian Social Council, we are consultant. We are by we Nigerian Social Council knows us very well. And we want Nigerian Education Council to be able to let people in Nigeria, for instance, to know more about our services. We do, we do assist the small scale and then the medium scale industry. And the medium and the small scale industry, they are the main uh, level that can actually increase the economy of any country. Because we have a huge number of small scale industries out there. But they don't know where to go. They don't know who to talk to to assist them in order to promote their business. Additionally, we tend to um, suggest to African countries to band together, that they create their own standard of food, and that they sit through all of their producers and say, well, this is the top producer of cocoa. This is the top producer. Yours is the finest quality. So we want yours to go to the trade show. We want our people to be so empowered with the understanding that they really can set the standard themselves. They don't have to adopt a, a European standard, even though whatever we put out in the market is going to, if, if we put out our best at all times to all the markets throughout the world, we will be known as people who have the highest standard. Welcome, welcome back again to Africa Express. Um, we're still here at the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce Trade Mission. With me is Chief and the Chairman of Nigerian American. Tell me, what are you doing here today? Oh, I'm a consultant. I'm a consultant for foreign university. And you can see I'm one of the happiest women who have seen my uh, multinational from Nigeria come to America to come and get to, to meet some to meet some of these uh, foreign investors because so many American multinationals also face in Nigeria. Look at what China is doing. So as they call me my dad, as my dad said, I want everything in America to be in Nigeria. So I'll be here to support them. What about everything in Nigeria to be in America? Yeah, that, that yeah. too. Yes, yes. Because we have a lot of products yeah. in Nigeria that can be marketed. Trust me. Like some of these. Trust me. Nigerians will have protection. Yes. We're very good. We just need somebody to encourage us. You understand? Somebody that will be ready to buy our product. We're not perfect, but we try. We'll be perfect. We're very enterprising. And we love what we do. And I can see Nigeria in every way. Because we have the technical manpower. We have, we have everything.
I'm holding is Mimi, we call it Mimi must go for ladies. This particular one is iPad bag. This one is iPad bag. One is this one is iPad bag. You can see iPad bag. The one, the next one is the men's bag. Salon bag for men. This is for men. This one on the floor here is conference bag. It's mini sets, can be for men for, or for ladies. This one is three in one pause. It has three in one, the first one. We have the second one inside. We have another one inside. We call it three in one pause. This one is cosmetic bag. Clutch bag. As you can see, it's coral and blue, reflecting the people of the Niger Delta region who we love so much and who are responsible for a vital part of our economy. And over here, what we have is a makeup bag, it's a cosmetic bag in blue and gold. And it's made of this material called Ashoke, which is indigenous to the Yoruba people of Nigeria. And for all of you who have little kids at home, this is our fabulous backpack, back to school. And it's made with Adira material, very intricate design. And it involves tying and dyeing the fabric in different colors with different waxes. And this is really just a harmonious reflection of the patchwork which makes Nigeria. And last but not least, we have our pink melody here. And really what it is, is it's three in one. And for our Yoruba ladies, we call it meta because it's one. And then it's two. And then it's three. So, we hope you enjoy. Definitely check us out. Um, you can reach us on our website, www.leluk.us. Thank you. Welcome back to Africa Express. We are still here at the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce Trade Mission to the United States. Um, one of, I, I, I've been talking to various people that are participating in the trade mission. I have with me uh, Mr. Femi Akimbi, who is uh, a trade consultant, I believe. And he's here to talk to us a little bit uh, as to why he is here and, and discuss a little bit about trade in Africa. Uh, you are welcome to Africa Express. Thank you for having me. Now, one specific question, one question that is in my mind is, Africa as a whole, why is it we do not have or we have not encouraged intra-trade among ourselves within the African countries? Mm. Uh, that's interesting in the sense that uh, at any point where you want to look at any issue in Africa, it must be put into proper perspective and proper historical perspective. If history is not properly attended to, we have a tendency to go to the wrong direction. Um, to look at this from a historical perspective, you have to realize that the continent was colonized by different entities, about five, six of them. Danish, German, British, uh, can go on and on. And each of those entities have different culture, different language. So as a result now, we're caught up in different states, different language, without interacting within ourselves. Because the power that be, during the Brentwood, in 1944, decided to split up into pieces. And they were a competing factor among themselves. So they are not going to bring us together for them or for us. Each entity is trying to keep all the slave colony or the colonial entity they have absorbed to themselves. Okay, understandable. I, I understand the uh, historical content of this, but in here we are. There is the ECOWAS. Okay. 
yet we are not able be, the, 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 the leaders are not making it easy for for instance someone who is in Nigeria to want to go trade in Ivory Coast easily to exchange their goods someone who is in Ivory Coast to go to South Africa or South Africa to bring their goods and, uh, and the, the, the funny thing is that we are all within the same continent uh, yet we cannot carry our goods easily across each other's country to go and sell it. Post-colonial Africa was deliberately fragmented. After the fragmentation, there was need for the colonial end to be able to separate us so they can get the mineral resources from us. Having said that, as we start to struggle with this issue, we've lost self. I'll give you an example to realize that it's not that we didn't make no effort, our attempt, our effort and attempt were derailed. In the 60s, there were three presidents of Africa who wanted to form an African unity front. That was Nama Nkrumah of Ghana, that was Patrice Mulumba, and that was uh, from Guinea-Bissau, I think it was Seke Touré of Guinea at this point. I'm not sure of that exact... Uh, Sheikh of Touré. Of Koke. Okay. Um, because I was thinking the continent has changed by name. Mm -hmm. But having said that, mm -hmm. these three head of state got together, decided to form an African unity front, united front. It was through their effort that Pan-Africanism came into existence. The Western world would not want the continent to unify because they need us for our mineral resource. One, two, as a dumping ground for Good, unwanted goods. Nkrumah administration was overthrown through a coup d'etat. Patrice Mulumba was as a coup and was assassinated with the help of the Western world. The secretary at the end was, uh, I think, it was a coup d'etat to uh, have to leave office. So when this group of people who tried to move us forward couldn't. We were left with a void. Welcome to Africa Express. Today we are back to the uh, Nigerian Embassy here in Washington, D.C. We're still with the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce Trade Mission, who are still here um, meeting today, actually the second day they are meeting with uh, various people who are in, interested in trading in Nigeria or engaging in some sort of venture with the uh, trade mission. With me is um, Mazi Sam Uvabonwa, who happens to be the national president of Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. And he is here with us to discuss why they are here and what they are doing. You're welcome to Africa Express. Thank you very much for inviting me. So, um, you are the president of the Chamber. chambers. And the leader of the delegation. And the leader of the delegation. Sure. Why this trip? Well, um, we have come to accept uh, this as one of our activities in the chamber because the motivation that we have in membership is to promote commercial intercourse, trade, investment between Nigeria and America. That's essentially the heart of our existence. So every other year we undertake this kind of trip to bring our members who are interested in opening new frontiers uh, who are seeking new opportunities, either to bring their products and services to America or to bring American products and services to Nigeria. I don't. So that's why we're here. And as a matter of fact, there's a greater urgency uh, in, in, in that because from our strategic review in Nigeria, we came to the conclusion that um, Nigeria is at risk with being over dependent on oil is so revenue source. 
it has always been a risk, but I think the risk is getting much more, much higher now. Uh, why do I say so? Uh, if you check America, for example, that is Nigeria's biggest oil importer, is cutting down, is developing its own local fields. All over the world, there's a frenzy to develop alternative sources of energy, much more environmentally friendly uh, energy sources than fossil or uh, hydrocarbon sources. And therefore, those of us in the public sector, at least chamber, determine that we must force an increased tempo the diversification of the ground, looking for other uh, income earning opportunities for Nigerian businesses and Nigerian nation, so that uh, when that day will come, when oil will become, you know, uh, I don't want to say useless, but it will no longer be a major contributor to national income. Nigeria will not be left and then the shots take.